this video we're going to work with a very important theorem in measure theory, and that is Egorov's theorem. Before we start with the proof, let me remind you that you can support the channel by donating on coffee, becoming a member on Patreon, or buying t-shirts, hoodies, and more things in our store. Egorov's theorem is a beautiful and very important theorem in measure theory and real analysis. Basically, what it says is that in finite measure spaces, almost everywhere conversions is very similar to uniform conversions. Because if we have a sequence in a finite measure space that converges almost everywhere to a function f, then well, we won't have uniform conversions, but we will on a very large set. Basically, we can take any small number epsilon, and there will exist some set with measure epsilon or smaller, for which our sequence will converge in its complement. So there will be a very large set E complement where our sequence converges uniformly. So finite measure spaces are usually very, very well behaved. And you might come across Egorov's theorem in probability theory, because probability spaces are the basic and trivial example of a finite measure space. The condition of having a finite measure space is essential and we will work on an example of this in the next video. Another thing to notice is that in this theorem we're asking for both our sequence and our function f to be measurable, because it could happen that a sequence of measurable functions converges to a function f that's not measurable. That might happen unless our measure is complete, and instead of asking to have a complete measure, it's just easier to ask for both the sequence and the limit function f to be measured. Okay, so let's start with the proof. We have conversions almost everywhere. So that means that there exists some set y with measure 0. And such that if x is in or the complement of y, then the sequence converges pointwise on x. And this happens for every x in this complement of y. So let's just call this space x tilde. And instead of working with x, let's work with x tilde. Well, of course, since we're only removing a set of measure 0, the measure of x is equal to the measure of x tilde. And now we can work on this space where we have pointwise conversions everywhere instead of almost everywhere. So what does it mean to have pointwise conversions? So let's say I take some x in x tilde and I want to write the definition of pointwise conversions. So we are already using epsilon here in the theorem. So let me just say for any delta greater than zero, there will exist some natural number n such that if n is greater than or equal to this number n, then fn of x minus f of x is less than delta. Now another way of writing this is instead of saying if n is greater than n, we can just say well for every n greater than n, we have this. And the reason why I'm saying this is because now we can just write this definition on a set. So what I'm saying is, if I want to graph all natural numbers greater than some n, I'm going to intersect over all those numbers. And the set I'm going to consider is, well, the points that satisfy this definition. So the points x in x tilde such that fn of x minus f of x is less than delta. So given delta, there exists a natural number n such that this happens. So the existence of this natural number n can be written as the union of all possible numbers n. And this was true for any element x in x tilde. So what this thing is saying is that actually x tilde is equal to this set. 
and so we were able to write our space in a form that kind of gives us more information because it's giving us the information of how the functions are converging on the elements in my set. To avoid writing this thing, what I'm going to do is call e n delta to the set and just to make things a bit more discrete, instead of considering deltas, we can just consider some natural number k and then just take 1 over k instead of delta. So the sets e and k are all the points where for this n and this k we have this relation. So what this is telling us is that actually x tilde is just the union over all natural numbers n of the intersection of e n k and this is for every k. So let's think about what it means for x to be in this intersection. So this is the intersection of all the elements in my space for which fn of x minus f of x is less than 1 over k. So this intersection is grabbing all the elements x for which our sequence from some point onwards behaves well. So what happens if we take the complement of this? So the complement of that is going to give us a greater than or equal to here and the union. So this complement is grabbing the elements x for which we don't have the very nice conversions for some natural numbers n. So what we are trying to do is, well, we want to show that this set, that the set of points where we don't have good behavior, has measure zero, because we're trying to prove a uniform conversions. And then, ideally, what we want to show is that the measure of this thing here, so the intersection and then the complement has measure zero. Or let's just say we want to prove that this is small enough. Let's think about these sets for a minute. So I'm taking intersections and I'm starting with the natural number one. So this intersection is bigger than if I start with number 2. So I'm intersecting more sets and that makes this set smaller. So that's smaller, the total intersection, than if I start from 2. And so on. What we're saying is that the sequence moving capital N is increasing. And we also know that x is the union of all these intersections. So the measure of x is obviously the measure of this. And so the measure of a union of an increase in sequence and also under the hypothesis that at least some element in my sequence has finite measure, in this case all elements in my sequence have finite measure, we can just write this as the limit when n tends to infinity of the measure of whatever is inside the union. And this is just by using the properties of measures, and if you don't remember, we have a video about the continuity of measures. And we also said before, that the measure of x tilde is the same as the measure of my original space x. So let's recall that our objective was to show that these sets have small measure. So let's go ahead. Now that we know something more about the measure of our sets, let's try and calculate this. So 
we're going now to calculate the measure of the intersection complement. Now here, because everything is finite, again, we have the measure of the complement is just going to be the measure of the entire space minus the measure of what we have inside. And now since the measure of x is the limit of this, then when we increase n, this will just go to zero. So the measure of the set of points where we have very bad conversions is very small. So it seems like we're in the right direction and it seems like it is possible for our sequence to converge uniformly somewhere. We just have to find that set where we have the uniform convergence. So this is great, but we have k and n are two kind of separate things, but n depends on k. And so let's try and put everything together and write this limit in a bit of a different way. So what I'm saying is, this limit means that for any k there exists some, let's say, nk such that the measure of this set is small. And let me cheat and say epsilon over 2 to the k and we'll see why I'm doing this, but it might seem very complicated at this point. Let's just say I can make this very, very small, and I'm just taking this to be a convenient number. We'll see why. Now, what's epsilon? Epsilon is the number that we have here. So we actually should have started by saying let epsilon be greater than zero. We didn't use epsilon anywhere else. But now that I'm getting to defining these sets, I'm using epsilon and to try and unify everything that we've done so far. So I said that our objective was to show that these sets had small measure. But now I kind of want to prove the same, but for the union, because this is just for a fixed n. But I want to be able to move k and just take every possible n. So what we actually want to show is that the measure of the union of all these sets is small. And now this union, since now the only thing moving is k, because this nk depends completely on k, this union is going to be over k. So what I'm saying is, well, we said that the complement of this intersection was grabbing all the points where we had bad conversions. But that was for a fixed n and for a fixed k. Now what I'm doing is just putting everything together, allowing k to move, and now I'm actually grabbing all the actual points where we have bad conversions for every k. So let's calculate this measure and see what we have. So now we have the measure of a union of something, and if this union was disjoint, then we would say, oh, this is equal to the sum. But these sets are probably not disjoint, and I don't care either, so I'm trying to prove that this is small. So I'm only worried about bounding it from above. The measure of a union is always less than or equal to the sum of the measures of what's inside. And in this case, we have the complement of this. And then the sum is going to be over the same as the union, so in this case natural numbers k. And now you can see why I cheated before and I just took epsilon over 2 to the k, this very strange number, and that's because now all these sets have measured less than this number, so I can just say that this is less than the sum epsilon over 2 to the k and then when I add 2 to the k that's going to give me 1 so this is just epsilon so I'm just showing that this set 
has measure less than epsilon. It has very, very small measure. So I took all the points where my sequence behaved badly and I showed that this set has measure less than epsilon. That's the first part in Negrov's theorem. We basically found our set E such that we have measure smaller than epsilon. But now we have to prove the important part of the theorem, and that is when we are in E complement, we have uniform conversions. And this should be easy because of the way that we build this set, which is removing all those points where we didn't have a uniform conversions kind of condition. So this part should now be trivial. To summarize, we found the set E such that the measure of E is less than epsilon. Now we need to show that on E complement we have uniform conversions. So what's E complement? It's going to be the complement of this, so we have a union that's becoming an intersection, and then it will be the complement of what's inside, and what's inside is also a complement, so it's just going to be this intersection. So if x is an element in E complement, that means that for every k and for every n greater than nk, we have that x is in this set, so f n of x minus f of x is less than 1 over k. And we have no dependence on x in any of these indices. And so that just shows us that fn converges uniformly to f for elements x that are in a complement. And that's exactly what we were trying to prove.